It's been an absolutely incredible 48 hours uh, in Russia. Starting late on Friday night, uh, Wagner Group mercenaries. These, this is a private army which has been fighting for Russia, uh, led by a warlord, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Those soldiers moved out of Ukraine and into Russia, and they seized control of Russian military bases in Rostov-on-Don, and then they moved about 300 miles north to a town, the city of Voronezh. Both those cities home to about a million people. On Saturday morning, they then started moving north towards Moscow and that's when things got really exciting. It appeared that Prigozhin was launching a coup. His soldiers were marching on the capital and the Russian government, the Kremlin, was scared. They carried on, they carried on until they were within about 120 miles of the capital and then suddenly what looked like a, a column, a charge that was heading for a military confrontation was called off. Prigozhin said he'd made a deal and the soldiers were coming back. Now that deal had a number of key pillars to it. Essentially, it was the Prigozhin and the soldiers who'd taken part in this attempted coup were going to be given military immunity. That now appears that it may have been rode back on. Vladimir Putin's authority is in tatters. It's almost unimaginable that a faction of his own forces could launch a military action inside Russia. Now, what's most remarkable about this is that they, they faced very little resistance. The Wagner Group fighters, we know, shot down a number of Russian Air Force planes. It was possibly one of the worst days in the last year and a half for the Russian Air Force. But actually, the army and the National Guard appeared to put up almost next to no resistance at all. Indeed, in some places, the Wagner fighters were waved forward on their march. So question number one, who is the army really loyal to and are they loyal to Vladimir Putin? Because on Saturday morning, Putin came out and called this a treacherous, treasonous mutiny and he vowed to crush Wagner and its leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin. A few hours later, those promises of, 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 of harsh reprisals had evaporated and Wagner fighters were being allowed to retreat at their own pace under the terms of a peace deal, under the terms of a deal we're led to believe brokered by the Belarusian president, uh, Viktor Lukashenko. Now, he is very much the junior partner with Russia, so another humiliation for Putin that he should have to turn to the, his neighbor Belarus to try and defuse what was clearly a crisis, a crunch moment for Moscow. On one level, nothing changes in Ukraine. The soldiers that are fighting there continue to fight against Ukraine's counterattack. But of course, the bigger picture, this is incredibly significant. Vladimir Putin was forced to make a national televised address. That was an emergency address. That is an address that would have filtered down across Russian state news. Soldiers on the front line will know what happened and they will be left asking the same questions that we're asking. How much control does Putin really have? Who is really in charge? Now that is going to sow doubt, it's going to dent morale. And if you're a soldier on the front line risking your life and you're not sure who or why you're risking your life for, then clearly that will affect the soldier's morale. It will work in Ukraine's favor equally at the top of the Russian army, at the top of the Ministry of Defense. People will be uncertain over who, whether, for example, Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu will stay in charge, whether Chief of the Defense Staff General Valery Gerasimov will stay in charge. Now, if people are concerned about those relationships, about the continuity in the army, that will have the generals possibly plotting amongst themselves. There will be intrigue and uncertainty. Again, all of that is going to erode the fighting capability, uh, the, the morale of the forces on the ground. It's hard to escape the feeling that there is blood in the water. Vladimir Putin has taken a punch in the gut, and unless he punches back fast and harder, unless he really is seen to crush the people who led this coup against him, then it's hard to imagine that there won't be more punches coming. The blood in the water, there are sharks that will be circling, just waiting for their moment to strike. It's very hard to put a timeline on this. There, this war has already dealt immeasurable damage to Putin's prestige around the world. But the concern is that the people who might want to see Putin toppled may only want to come and fight Ukraine even harder. Those people manoeuvring for power are yet to really show their hands. Prigozhin appears to have played his hand. He's launched this attempted coup. But for now, at least, it looks like he's out of the picture. The question is whether this will empower those other lieutenants in the inner circle uh, to make their move as well.
Well, on one level, Ukraine's counteroffensive continues, and we've learned today from the Ukrainian authorities they claim to have captured uh, another village as part of that offensive. That's one of the most significant advances over the last two weeks. At the same time, this has been a huge morale boost for Ukraine. One of the messages that came out over the last 72 hours, 48 hours, is that people were enjoying watching the spectacle of chaos engulfing Russia. And that really matters because morale, it's hard to put a measure on how important morale is for soldiers who are risking their lives day in and day out in potentially terrible conditions on the front line. One group of soldiers, the Russians, will be questioning who's in charge and why they're fighting. The other group will be seeing their enemy engulfed in chaos, and that can only be uh, good news for Ukraine.